In this lesson, we're going to take a look at configuring Outlook Web Access on Exchange Server 2010. So in the previous lesson, you might recall that we went and had a quick look at the Outlook Web Access, uh, Outlook Web App logon screen. So I'm going to bring that up again. So that is uh, ex2010server.exchangebootcamp.local or your server name, your fully qualified server name slash OWA. And what we get is uh, this Outlook Web App login form. So this is what is known as forms-based authentication for OWA. We can go ahead and log on now. We've got a couple of options, whether we are logging on from a public or shared computer or a private computer. And these two uh, options uh, basically control things such as the idle timeout uh, and some, uh, some other settings. And there's also the option to use the light version of Outlook Web App. Um, which is useful in low bandwidth situations or if you're using a browser that uh, doesn't fully support Outlook Web App. So the login format by default is domain slash username and then the password. So I'll go ahead and log on now with my administrator account. Sign in. Because this is the first time I've logged on, Outlook Web App wants to uh, wants me to configure some regional settings. So the language, for example, English, English uh, United States is usually fine. Uh, let's see if we can get English Australia. There we go. And the time zone which it has automatically picked up from the server itself. So I'm in Brisbane, which is UTC plus 10. But if a person connecting to Outlook Web App for the first time was uh, perhaps a remote a remote office worker in a different location, this is their opportunity to set a time zone for OWA. Okay, so that's logged on successfully, and as you can see, I've got the administrator mailbox open. There's no items at the moment because I haven't sent or received any mail. Um, nothing uh, too interesting to really look into here. I just wanted to show you that login process. And what we'll do now is we'll go and have a look at some of the server settings that control that login process. So I'll close Internet Explorer. We'll go back into the Exchange Management Console, and drill down into server configuration, and then client access because Outlook Web App is part of the client access server role. So there's my Exchange 2010 server and here is the Outlook Web App virtual directory. So let's open the properties of that and have a closer look. So two things uh, to first notice is the internal URL for Outlook Web App and the external URL for Outlook Web App. Now the internal URL is basically the uh, what the users will use to connect to OWA internally. You can use DNS aliases and things like that, but by default, this is configured to the fully qualified server name, domain name of the server, slash OWA. And the external URL that you notice here is the same name, once again, that I entered during, uh, that I entered during Exchange 2010 setup. Okay, so if you didn't enter an external host name during your Exchange server setup, you'll find this external URL field will be blank. But you can go ahead and type in your external URL now if you wish to. And that will typically be uh, mail or webmail uh, dot your domain name dot com slash OWA. And it doesn't have to be the same domain name as your internal Active Directory. It can be a separate DNS name entirely. Now here on the authentication tab we'll find these forms based authentication settings. So by default, forms-based authentication is used, and it uses a login format of domain, uh, domain slash username. But you also have the option to use the user principal name, and that's useful for environments where users are given a uh, UPN that matches their email address. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for them to remember what to use for their username when they're logging into webmail. Um, it's very easy for them to remember their email address, and if the two are the same, then they really don't have to think about it too hard. And the other option uh, which you might want to consider instead is username only. So it just saves them having to type in the domain name, which a lot of users really don't know. So you can choose a default domain name for them. So there's my exchange bootcamp.local. I'll put that in as the default logon domain for my users. And that would save them having to type in domain slash username every time. So let's have a look at what happens when I apply that change. All right, so the changes apply, but what I need to do is restart IAS before they will take effect. So it gives me the command to run here. It says run 
IIS reset slash no force. So that's fine. I'll bring up a command prompt and do that right now. All right, so in some cases you might find that uh, with the no force parameter, uh, it doesn't work. So you can go ahead and use a little bit more force. Okay, all done. Let's move that out of the way. We'll just leave this dialog open and go back into Internet Explorer and bring up OWA again. All right, so no significant changes at first, but the main difference is that the username prompt now, now no longer says domain slash username, it just says username. And we can leave off the domain name when we log in. And you'll notice also that because this is now the second time I've logged in, it doesn't prompt me for any regional settings such as language and time zone. Okay, so let's close down that one again. So forms-based authentication is useful if you are uh, publishing your Outlook web app to the internet directly, because that login form uh, is a very user-friendly experience for people who may be connecting perhaps from their home computers. But if you're only using Outlook web app internally, or if you're publishing with an ISA server, you might find that one of the other authentication methods is more suitable. So what I'm gonna do is enable integrated Windows authentication and apply that change. And once again, we find that we need to restart IIS, but we also get this additional warning that because we've changed the authentication method for OWA, we also wanna make the same change to the ECP virtual directory in the same website. So let's go ahead, and go ahead and have a look at that now. The ECP is the exchange control panel. So let's open that virtual directory properties. And you can see this virtual directory also has an internal URL and an external URL, which are the same as the OWA ones, except for the end here, which have slash ECP instead of slash OWA. And they have the same uh, authentication options available so what we need to do is just match that with the OWA virtual directory. And then go ahead and reset IS again. All right, so one more time we'll go into Internet Explorer and access OWA. Okay, and I've been prompted for credentials in this case. So let's see if we can fix that. Look in the security zones, intranet zone, automatically detect and add in my local uh, Active Directory namespace there. Try that again. Okay, so this time with integrated authentication enabled, and now that it meets the requirements of being one of the local intranet zones in IE, it just logs on automatically with my current credentials, and I don't have to fill out that login form. So once again, for internal Outlook Web Access, uh, Outlook Web App use, you might find that integrated authentication uh, is, is a good user experience uh, for your clients. But if you're publishing it externally, you'd probably lean more towards using forms-based authentication uh, because that's more suitable for people logging in uh, from their home computers and things like that. So what I'm going to do is actually just wind back those settings to forms-based authentication because I will be accessing this externally. Change that back to forms-based. And do the same for the OWA virtual directory. Back to forms based, but I'm going to leave the uh, login domain pre configured. One more IIS reset. And that's all done. So go ahead and configure your OWA authentication, whichever way you'd prefer it. And then it's time to move on to the next lesson.